So, Zach, what would you say is Maury's legacy with the Rockets? Uh, number one, uh, the rise of the three-pointer as the dominant shot in the NBA. He's one of the three or four people most <laughs> responsible for that. Like it or hate it, that's his encore legacy. For the Rockets, it's the James Harden trade. To acquire all the draft picks it took to make that trade without tanking because he had a mandate to not tank when Yao and Tracy McGrady started breaking down. It would be the crowning achievement for a lot of general managers. It's an all-time great trade. And then once you get James Harden, it doesn't matter if the Warriors get Kevin Durant. It doesn't matter if they seem unbeatable. You go all in to try to win. You're not afraid. You don't wait them out. And he said he used every resource at his disposal to try to make the best team he could during James Harden's prime. And in 2018, they got damn close. I agree. Look. I live down here in Houston, and Daryl Morey gave the Houston Rockets and the city of Houston life. Like, when he made that trade for James Harden, all of a sudden, a couple years later, they were contenders. They were not even talked about. So I'm looking at Daryl Morey, and in my opinion, he set the bar for a lot of GMs because he was aggressive, he was fearless, he, he, he wanted to win, and he was in the moment. And I love how aggressive he was in trades to try to make it happen. When you look at his resume, especially over the last five or six years, about four of those teams that they lost to, all of them went on to win the title. So that says to me that he was actually doing something right. He went against some powerhouses in the Golden State Warriors, and then, then this year against the Los Angeles Lakers against LeBron James and Anthony Davis. So I think in the future, Darren Moore would get another job. He deserved another job. I'm mad that he left the Houston Rockets organization because he's a hell of a general manager. Yeah, executive of the year in the past. And look, he is really one of the lead voices in bringing analytics into the NBA and the rise of the integration of that into front offices. And certainly some people think that has gone too far. But there is no doubt that having more information, more tools at your disposal makes you a better franchise. That is just a fact. And the fact that he just really brought about so much creative thinking, I think that spread across the league as well. That sports in general is a place where people look to what's been successful in the past. It's a bit of a copycat league, the NBA. And Daryl Morey really spurred the idea of, I don't really care what everyone else did. What can we do? What fits our personnel? What's going to make us the best? And I think that that is going to be a big part of his legacy as well. The NBA has been better for having Daryl Morey in it for as long as he's been in it. I love the idea that he wants to take a year off maybe and spend some time with his family and just kind of recharge after what was the longest and most difficult basketball season for both him, the Rockets, and possibly the rest of the league. But I do hope that he comes back because, again, the NBA is a better place when Daryl Morey is around. Of course, the Rockets are going to have to move forward without him, so I want to look at that as well, guys. Three-point shooting, ISO heavy. It has been a distinct brand of basketball. You can see such a big jump in the Rockets' three-point shooting from the 2016 season, 2017. Incremental increases each subsequent season. The Rockets had four of the five highest three-point attempts seasons in NBA history over just the last four seasons. Perk, do you think now with the GM gone, with the coach gone, the Rockets' style of play is going to significantly change because the personnel is still the personnel? Right, and I think they're still going to play small, but just them focusing on shooting three-pointers and getting layups, that's going to change, and they're going to have to realize that the mid-range is still there and it's still alive, and you need that to win the championship. And I'm also looking at it that you, you do need to add in a big man that could protect the rim. If you look at all the championship teams throughout the history of the NBA, they had a rim protector. And I know Dwight Howard left the Houston Rockets on bad terms. He also lost, left the Los Angeles Lakers on bad terms and had the chance to make it up to him, and he did just that. If I'm the Houston Rockets, I'm looking at Dwight Howard, and I'm saying, hmm, I'm still want to, I might want to consider picking him up in the offseason. He's low risk for high reward. He's still one of the most athletic bigs in the game today. He still can anchor a defense, and you could get him, and, and I think he will improve that team dramatically. Zach, Perk has been banging this Perk. drum all week about Dwight Howard. Zach, I, I was asking Perk on Tuesday, I think, does he want Dwight to do a whole redemption tour of all of his former teams because it would take a while. Um, do you think that that's a smart pickup for him? for them or some someone that they should go after I I don't know if James is ready to have Dwight back but I agree with Perk I think they will get a center I don't know that they'll get a starting center but I think they're going to have a rim running shot blocking center 
in their rotation next year. Tim McMahon from ESPN has mentioned Nerlens Noel as a possible target. But stylistically, I still think they're going to play Mori ball. They're going to shoot a lot of threes. They're going to ISO a lot. And they've gotten pretty far that way. To me, the biggest question facing them is not only their defense, but offensively, James Harden has to be a threat when he doesn't have the ball. He can't just pass the ball and stand near half court and wait for the possession to end. Perk has talked about that a lot. They need to just be a little bit more dynamic late in games against great, great defenses. We haven't seen enough of that. We haven't seen a lot of great big games like that from James when the chips are really down. So, you know, and next year, look, the window is getting a little narrower for them. James and Russ are getting older. They don't have a lot of cap flexibility, and the West is going to be absolutely loaded next year. Like, the, the window's getting a little smaller. Yeah, and when you look beyond that, you then start to have years with no picks, right? Or, or the pick swaps or the picks that they've given away. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of win Ooh. now going on in Houston. Also in Houston, just really tough news yesterday. Longtime mm -hmm. Houston Rockets scout B.J. Johnson died tragically in a bicycle accident at the age of 65. Wow. Johnson had been with the Rockets since their 95 championship season. The franchise released a statement which reads in part, quote, B.J. was beloved and respected not only throughout the Rockets organization, but across the league and the basketball world. And that is true. Daryl Morey added, before I came to the Rockets, Chris Wallace told me the greatest scout in the NBA was B.J. Johnson, and I should talk to him first. I followed his advice, and what followed was an amazing 14-year friendship. He was by my side for every key decision. I can't believe he is gone. And Jamal Crawford shared, no, not B.J. Johnson. He said, when I was an improving rookie, he helped me get a lot of the confidence that I had a bright future, even when I didn't see it, Jamal wrote. He said, I wasn't even on his team. He always had some words of encouragement or just kept it real with me. Prayers to his family. His family, Johnson, is survived by his wife, Claudette, his son, Bijan, and two stepchildren, Michael Mitchell and Sierra Brown. 